All right, before we move on from direct comparison, um, next topic is going to be the limit comparison test. I want to do one more example with direct comparison, and I want to do this example to try and convince you why the limit comparison test is useful, right? Direct comparison is nice. It gets you the answer really fast if you can set up that inequality. If you can't set it up easily, maybe you want something better. So let's look at these two examples. Now, A, part A is straightforward, okay? Let's look at the solution for part A. For part A, I can simply say that 1 over n squared plus n is, now of course, I can choose to drop either of these two. They're both positive, right? If I remove either one of them from the sum, I'm going to get a smaller number in the denominator, so a bigger number overall. But I want to keep the one that gives me a convergent series, right? So 1 over n squared. And I know that this series here converges. And again, we know that converges because it's a p-test. p is 2. It's bigger than 1. We know that this series converges as well. And we can give the reason. Converges by comparison. Okay, that sounds too bad. Um, what about part B? So here's where things get a little bit tricky. The, the intuition that you want to apply is that for rational functions, large powers dominate, right? And so we should look at this and say, if I ignore the smaller powers, this is effectively a p-series. p is equal to 2, 2 is bigger than 1. I expect it should converge, right? But it's not exactly a p-series. So we have to try and compare to 1, right? Um, the only other difference, you'll notice I started the sum at 2 because 1 minus 1 would give me a 0 in the denominator, which is not good. But as long as n is bigger than or equal to 2, n squared minus n is going to be positive. So we have, you know, we have a positive sequence. We're, we're good to go on that. Um, but we can't do the same sort of direct comparison that we just did, right? If we try it, it's, it's bound to fail because if I just drop the minus n, right? That subtracting n is making the denominator smaller. If I remove it, the denominator gets bigger. The overall terms get smaller. Inequality goes the wrong way. So I can't, I can't use it, right? It doesn't work. So what do we do? Well, you start fiddling around. And you just say, like, how, can I, how can I get this thing to go the right way? Um, so subtracting n, how do we, how do we fix it? You can mess around their options, like maybe you try to complete the square or something like that. I mean, that actually is an option. You could do that. Um, completing the square might work. Um, we might try to say something like, well, you know what? We know that, um, we know that n, n is bigger than or equal to 2 in this scenario. Um, if I multiply both sides by, um, by n, I know that uh, n squared is bigger than or equal to 2n, um, right? I can multiply both sides in inequality as long as the thing I'm multiplying by is positive. Um, and then I could also multiply by 1 half. So 1 half n squared would be bigger than or equal to n. OK. Um, or in other words, um, minus n, okay, if I reverse the, so move this over, minus n will be bigger than or equal to minus one-half n squared. So I just swap the two sides. Um, and now I can add n squared to both sides. n squared minus n is bigger than or equal to n squared minus half n squared, which is half n squared. Very good. Okay. So with all that, now I can say that I have my solution, right? 
So I can say this. I can say since n squared minus n is bigger than or equal to 1 half n squared, I know that 1 over n squared minus n is less than or equal to 2 over n squared. And I know that the sum n going from 2 to infinity of 2 over n squared converges. Again, p test the 2 on top is a constant. Does it matter? Factor it out. It's 1 over n squared. Um, I know that the sum for n squared minus n also converges. And again, it's by comparison, by direct comparison. All right? But that direct comparison was a whole lot harder to set up than this one. All right? You had to come up with this, and, and you probably don't necessarily come up with that idea on the spot, right? You're in the middle of an exam, maybe you're not going to think about that. That's where the limit comparison test comes in, right? Limit comparison is the test to use with that intuition that highest powers are dominant, right? Limit comparison says, hey, I want to compare this with 1 over n squared. The direct comparison doesn't seem to be working out for me. Maybe there's a simpler way to set this up. We'll see that in the next couple of videos.